The traditional method of performing a knee replacement is to make cuts based upon what one imagines the alignment should be, but often one doesn't have absolute precise knowledge of that. Today we're going to look at a robotically assisted knee replacement using the Mako robot. It's a tool which helps me both plan and execute the knee replacement with a great degree of accuracy. I personally think this is the future of joint replacement surgery for hips, knees, maybe other joints as well. It's so accurate that it means that we can really plan and execute perfectly. Hello. So, today's the day we finally get to fix your knee using the Mako robot. So it's going to give us a nice plan which we'll adjust during theatre and make sure it fits you perfectly. A knee, like any joint, is really two bearing surfaces formed from the end of the thigh bone and the top of the shin bone. And the surface is covered with a slidey gristle called articular cartilage. And over years, we wear that away, rather like wearing away the tread on your car tyres. And you end up with bone rubbing on bone. And that is osteoarthrosis, wear and tear, and it's very painful. When patients develop arthritis, essentially what we do is we resurface the joints with a new bearing surface. It's a little bit like crowning a tooth. So we put a metal surface on both the thigh bone and the shin bone, and a plastic bearing surface between the two. It seems quite straightforward, but it's actually quite challenging. What we try and do is recreate the patient's normal anatomy. In other words, what they were like and what their knee was like before they developed arthritis. So that the patient's leg is correctly aligned or straight for them and that the tension in the ligaments that hold the bones together, which we try and preserve, remains the same as they were when the patient had their normal native knee. Up until now, when we have tried to realign or correct alignment in a joint, we've based our implantation of the knee replacement on population averages. The problem, of course, though, is that there are people who are outside that band of normal, and so our attempts to get these people back to where they should be have been very challenging because we haven't really had the ability to do it accurately. And so what we need is help to try and personalise the alignment for that particular patient. And that's where the robot comes into its own. The first part of this process is planning. And planning in any operation is one of the most important things that we do. We need to know how bad is the knee at the start and what are we trying to achieve? Where are we trying to put our knee replacement so it's absolutely right for that patient? There are a number of steps to the planning process. The first being the creation of a three-dimensional model of the patient's knee. And we use a thing called a CT scan for that. A CT scan is a very complicated X-ray which allows us to slice the patient's knee up in many, many thin slices. And so we can get a very accurate picture of the size and where the wear is within the knee. These images that we can see on the screen are the first part of the CT scan, which provides us with the overall alignment of the patient. So we have the pelvis up here and the foot and ankle down here. This is the knee and the weight bearing axis should run through the center of the knee. But in fact, from here, the hip to the, pel to the ankle, it's actually shifted across towards the damaged side here. So once we've acquired the CT scan, what we do is we import it into the robot and the robot can then use the scan to plan the knee replacement with extra information that I give it at the time of theatre. But this is the starting point. So what we're doing now is we're putting some pins in so that we can attach the array so that the robot can see where the leg is. The first part of the operation is to then tell the robot where that three-dimensional model sits in space. And we do that using special arrays. So I'm now attaching the arrays to allow the robot to see where the leg is. 
The computer knows where these arrays are. What we're now going to do is work out where the leg is. So we start by rotating it so that the centre of the hip is found. And we find capture, the ankle capture, femur capture, and tibia. Good, blue pro. So now the computer and the robot knows where the leg is in space and knows what the alignment of the leg is. What we now need to tell is, is where precisely is the knee joint and where is the wear in the knee. And it will use this to map onto the CT scan it already has. So that once the robot has that information, capture, it can marry the plan and the CT scan to the patient's position within space. Yep. The next yep. stage is that we adjust the plan and the alignment very subtly, actually in the operation, as we measure the tension in the ligaments. So having mapped the knee to the CT scan, what we're now doing is looking at the position and alignment of the leg. And what this machine is telling me is that this gentleman cannot fully straighten his leg and is off by eight degrees. It also says that his leg is bowed, like a cowboy's leg, by seven degrees. Neither of those things we want. So what we can now do is work out what the ligament tension is before we plan further where we're going to make our cuts. In full extension, there. One of the important things to understand about putting a knee replacement in is that we retain most of the ligaments those are the ropes that hold both bones together and they are of a fixed length. Now it's very important that the tension in those ligaments remains precisely the same as it should be for that patient. What's giving me information at the moment is the position of the knee which the computer knows or the robot knows because it's looking at the trackers. So it can tell where the knee is tight or loose. If we allow the ligaments to become slack, the patients complain of instability. And if we tighten it too much, the patients will have a stiff knee that's painful. So keeping the ligaments precisely the right length is very important. The robot helps us implant the knee such that that tension between the ligaments remains the same. And more importantly, we don't have to cut or release ligaments to get the knee replacement in. So I can barely get the one spoon in. So what this tells us is that this gentleman has had a knee that's been bowed for so long, it's come to assume that position of the ligaments on the inside are very tight. What we're trying to do is make sure that the gap between the two components is the same all the way across. Not like this or like this. If we put the knee replacement in this position, he will be tight on the inside. So we can alter the knee replacement now to straighten his leg and ensure that it's in the correct position by changing the plan slightly to f suit him and his knee in person. Right, do a bit more. Where are we now then, folks? Okay, so we're good at extension. Still a little yeah. bit tight on that medial compartment in flexion. Right, a bit more external rotation. So the important thing to understand is we start off with a plan which we then modify based upon this particular patient's knee that we find at surgery by measuring the tension in the ligaments. And it allows us to make changes to where we intend to put the implant before we make any cuts. In other words, measure two or three times and cut once. And that's one of the most important things to understand about this type of surgery it responds to the situations in surgery and we treat both the soft tissues and the bone. Right, let's do a bit more. Yeah, so circle the numbers bottom right. So if you look at those four numbers, what we want is for them to be the same. And yes, we've got one millimetre difference in one of the numbers. And we could chase that to try and make it 19, but that level doesn't require doing. Essentially now, what we've got is a knee that's very beautifully balanced. And if we made the cuts that we've now planned, this knee should fit perfectly, and I should need to do no ligamentous releases. The final stage is 
execution where the robot assists me making very precise and extremely accurate cuts and thus restore the patient's knee shape and alignment and tension between the ligaments as if the patient had a normal knee, for in other words, imagine they were 20 again. We can now bring the robot in, which will help me execute that plan with a high degree of accuracy. What we're now doing is making sure that the robot knows where the knee is and where the saw blade is. And the robot will now be able to execute because it now knows where the leg is, where the knee is, and where the saw blade is. And as opposed to normal surgery where you watch the knee, this time I'm watching the screen. As you can hear, when it suddenly stops, it's telling me that it, I can't do what I'm about to do. That's the beauty of the robot. It stops me doing things that shouldn't happen. It's preventing me from doing the wrong thing. I'm an experienced surgeon. I've been putting knee replacements in for 20 years. Nibbler. So I can perform knee replacements well, but what this robot gives me is confidence that I'm putting the knee replacement in as well as I can possibly do it. So this is the bone that's been removed from the top of the shin bone. As you can see, only a couple of millimetres on this side, a bit more on that side. That's where all the wear was, so you take less bone off the worn side. And that's what we will resurface. The truth of the matter is, having seen some of the results, when I use this tool, I can put them in better than I've ever put them in before. All we have to do now is fit the knee replacement and we should be done. The key question will be, will I have to do any soft tissue releases or will it fit perfectly and will it have corrected the alignment? We shall see. My view is this robot allows me to really personalise what I do for each patient that comes in. So we've now put the trial in and what this tells us on the machine is that from a knee that he couldn't straighten, it is now straight. From a knee that was once bowed, it is now straight. And the balance is exactly what we want. It enables me to really focus on trying to provide that patient with a functional knee replacement, which means that in six months or a year's time, when people say to the patient, how's your knee replacement? They look slightly bewildered and say, oh, you mean the one I had replaced? Oh, it's fine. So this is the shiny femoral component that sits on the end of the thigh bone. That's the bearing surface, and so it's highly polished and very hard. This is the piece of plastic that goes between the two. One of the fantastic things about using a robot is that it provides you with consistency, and robots are good at that. They are highly accurate and highly consistent. It means that Whatever day you come to the operating theatre, you have the confidence that it will deliver the plan that you set out to achieve with it. This is the plastic bearing surface that we put and it fixes onto the top of the shin band, out. So it is a highly consistent and accurate friend and helper doing these operations. The Mako robot is quite new to this country, but worldwide, about 100,000 new ones. And so we already know that it produces a, a very accurate implantation, and we've seen tremendous benefits like less pain postoperatively, less bleeding, patients in and out of hospital more quickly, quicker recovery, better function. So it's already proving to be a remarkable tool. Right, can we have a little look then? Oh, we like that. So with the final implants in place, we have straightened the knee completely. We now have a knee that has been resurfaced in a perfect position. We've had to do no ligamentous releases. 
and this gentleman should have a great recovery. Robotic surgery has been used for some time now in different fields in medicine and the, the whole aim really is to try and use technology to help us personalise what we do for individual patients, to be able to plan what we do and carry it out accurately. It's part of a general trend really to try and ensure that medicine is personalised for the particular and individual patient that is sitting in front of you. And certainly my experience of using this robot is it does precisely that. I think the most important way to look at this technology is it enables surgeons to do what they need for each particular patient. Um, I think doing the regular knee replacements that we do very reliably and well will be the first step. But I also think it has the ability to help us with very complicated and difficult cases or patients who, whose alignment is not that normal, in other words, an outlier and it will help us to get them right. I'm very lucky to be able to have one. I think this is the future. I think personalization of surgery is where we need to be going and I'm absolutely certain that you will see a huge take up of this technology in the future because for patients to have a personalized knee replacement and great function at the end that's what we're that's what we're aiming for.